because he talked about issues of being in social work when he was a Salvation Army case worker. He had a one of his cases, a boy called Sam. He was 11 years old. I remember the same age as me. I come home from school and I'm fooling around in the one room and his window into the kitchen. My mom's in the kitchen. My dad comes home. He's crying. First time I see my father cry. Comes in. See my mom and says, Sam killed himself today. Mm -hmm. Put two young children in clothes of man who didn't die. That is a part of what we're talking. We taught anger, we taught rage, we taught hurt, we taught him to feel less than human so that he'll do inhumane things. Our fathers in social work watched millions of dollars go to social welfare and said something that ain't enough. It ain't enough. And there's something more underlying, more foundational, more grounding. And that is the notion of being feeling that you are worth it that you have a strong sense of self-worth. And that comes from the culture. That comes from heritage. It comes from who you are. So my dad understood that Hokulea had to carry the dignity and identity of culture. But he also said a very interesting thing. He said, but watch out. You're on the razor's edge. As you start to bring your sense of the strength of your identity, make sure that you do it in a way that does not diminish any other culture but doing the same. Because my father was clear crystal clear that any success that we will do as a society has to be in a way that we embrace all. We just cannot embrace a select few. Voyage not for you. It's for children not born. If it's meaningful, you sail this voyage, you capture the story, and you share it. Because your story is too important. Um, my father kept saying, it's not about you, it's about them. And, uh, 45 minutes, knees bump. We're engaged. Uh, next. We're talking to each other. Oh, we're hopeful. And um, prepare to train. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to train. Um, so I walk out the door. My dad pulls me aside. He goes, yeah, I know. You, you want to navigate. Who's your teacher? He knew. He don't come from home. Remember, don't come look for me, you won't find me. Well, no choice. He don't come, we don't go. I flew to Micronesia, found him. Not really. Uh, he let me find him. Mm -hmm. Small after. Sat on a driftwood log at White Sand Beach. Of all the things Ma and his great power is, 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 is a sense of human compassion. He knew of Eddie's story, he was very sad, his head was down. And I simply told my mom, we need you, not to find Tahiti for us, but help us to find it for ourselves. Uh, Mao like Tebaki, it was interesting, this debating whether he wants to come back to Hawaii, because it wasn't a place he wanted to be. Um, so he just said, well, we'll see, like Tebaki. Two months later, I come home, no commitment from mom, he don't come, we don't go. I get a phone call from Mao's son, Henry, from Saipan. He says, Mao will be at your house tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I was a commercial fisherman, never washed anything, um, hardly had any food, he lived in a small one bedroom on the place I was renting. So Mao came, and he lasted in my house about three days. <laughs> He moved in, my mom and dad had his own bedroom, ate three times a day, he was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he took all of us, not just me, all of us by the hand of children. Pulled us through a window of time, into the old world, the powerful world of the navigator. Keep in mind, I'm no navigator, I'm a student of him. He is it, and he's the only one. You know, in the crisis, there was crucial decisions. One of them was Native Hawaiians were saying, you know, Blair, this is a Hawaiian canoe for Hawaiian hands and Hawaiian eyes only. And, you know, to me, fair. It's a debate you need to respect because it is the one to see taken away. 